The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to Love Light Sound Radio, aligning and consciously creating your life with host Susanna Jameson on Transformation Talk Radio. Follow Susanna as she channels dynamic frequency encodings of sound and light that initiate clearing, activation, balancing, and alignment with a new vibration of well-being. Allow your higher vibrational self to unfold on Love Light Sound Radio. Transformation happens here now. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the show. It's great to have all of you tuning us in and turning us on. I'm Dr. Pat, and what a great show we have for you today. Love Light Sound Radio with Susanna Jameson joining me here today. You know, what happens when we align? What happens when we balance? What happens when we consciously create the lives that we want? Today, I'm so thrilled to actually introduce all of you to what Love Light Sound healing frequencies are, thanks to Susanna's great body of work, and how they work with each and every one of us every day. What can we do with them? How can our lives change? Why is it so important to even have this conversation? Well, many years ago, you heard conversations about the law of attraction, the secret, all of those things. But what they didn't tell you was that you have to really be aware and mindful of energy, vibration, and frequency in a way that we had never known before. Today, thanks to Susanna's fabulous work, you know, we now know that she can help people heal. She can do this because she's done it. And for those of us now that totally get vibrations and totally get what this is about, we're learning how to show up more fully in life, but more importantly, how to love ourselves, how to know what that looks like and feels like, and then how to move beyond. You know, for me, I am so thrilled to have this amazing, you know, healer, this person that has said yes, whether it's holistic, intuitive notions, ideas, talents, and gifts, all of the above, certified life health coach, which we need so much of today, we now know that there is a new level of empowerment, a new narrative on empowerment, and we are an active ingredient. Susanna, it's great to have you. Thank you so much. Well, that is a warm welcome. Uh (laughs) Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it, Pat. Thanks. Yeah. You know, each of us has a story. Mm-hmm. And I've I've started to share my story now about my life, how I'm here, and what really keeps me motivated and moving forward every day. And when I share it, it has to do with a number of different personal traumas, experience, and things like that. How has your journey, what about your journey, your story, how has that helped shape who you are today? But it's really my life story, you know, starting from scratch. The what I feel attracted to working with, or what I feel called to work with, is basically anyone who has, um, an you know, trauma in an extent of where it shows up like I'm a burden, you know, I feel like a burden, or not lovable, not acceptable, I'm not good enough, um, you know, um, worthy, not worthy, or. And um, so how that manifested in my life is that from, you know, three weeks old on, I had that sense of being a burden. And then later on, it became an issue of um, being abandoned, actually, within my family. And then abusive uh, childhood, emotional and physical abuse, Um, alcoholic parents, you know, ran away from home when I was 18 and made it uh, by myself on $50 savings, basically, you know, and You know, more abusive relationships. My first marriage was with an alcoholic again, so repeating the pattern. And that's what I'm seeing with my clients also, you know, where we get stuck in traumatic patterns because we haven't found a way to extricate ourselves from that. And, you know, for me then after that marriage, it was about finding my own healing path and finding how 
you know, coming to an understanding of why that actually was happening to me and finding my own way out of that. And that took me like, you know, 20, 20 plus years, you know, and I've tried all kinds of things. I mean, I'm a naturopathic doctor. I did like extensive homeopathy studies, you know, clinic management, internship, you name it. I have loads of certifications. I don't want to bore anyone to death with, you know, energy and work. <laughs> There isn't much I haven't done, um, you know, nutrition, diet, you know, all of it, cleanses, um, meditation practices extensively. Um, and, you know, what I've found is basically over the years, I, uh, I was able to kind of, you know, select out of my own experience what I found was the most um, conducive ways to approach trauma. And I love that you're bringing up um, positive affirmation. You know, there's so much about that. And there's a few misperceptions around that, why it's often not working for people. And, you know, we can address that in a moment. Yeah. Just uh, want to quickly finish my story here. So yeah. then, you know, I was already pretty successful in my work in terms of, you know, what I had um, kind of put together. And then there was more recently, like two years ago, there was a very traumatic uh, experience in my life. I'm, and I'm actually um, talking about it in my book, The Healing Power in Finding Your Innocence, that basically gives the story about that. And, you know, basically that I, I kind of was at that point I was before I thought like I had it all together, you know, got it all figured out and um, also was in a place or space of unconditional love that I thought like, wow, you know, can't get any better. What I failed to notice was that that unconditional love was for others. It wasn't for myself. And that was what that particular traumatic experience basically brought home to me that I had to make myself my first priority in order to be really, you know, unconditional for others too. You know, I noticed yeah. that actually there was a price tag attacked attached to that love I had for the other person and making someone else more important than myself in that moment cost us both. Um, um, yeah, tremendously. Oh, and oh. it's huge right now because, you know, I, I'm, first of all, I'm so glad you're joining us here today for the show. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'm really excited about and is so needed is this idea of not even knowing when we are being there for other people. We, we can't see it, can we, Susanna? We, we can't see it. Well, it's like in the moment, in my experience, you know, um, it, it's the whole subject around self-sacrificing and overgiving. You know, there are a lot of, especially like people in the helping professions, you know, healers, coaches, people who come naturally with a big, big heart, you know, kind-hearted people who do obviously naturally have the inclination to wanting to give because that's just how we are, like that's who we are and how we're made. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, as long as it doesn't shift into this, you know, overgiving, like where we're making, you know, we're putting ourselves last, like everyone else is coming first and it's, you know, self-care, what's that? How do you spell this? You know, and <laughs> right, it's like, you know, can't find it in the dictionary, but it's, it's um, you know, that's exactly what it is. And that, that notion, that fine line, you know, where we trip over to overgiving and self-sacrificing, that is the part that is actually self-sabotaging, you know, where we're not coming from love, but basically we're coming from fear of not being loved, not being good enough, wanting to be loved back. It's like, you know, look, I'm doing all of this for you. You know, how about it? You know, am I good enough now? Can you, I mean, do you see me? I mean, do I need to do more? Right. right. So it, it has this kind of anxious um, notion running underneath. But we're not aware of that. And we're not aware of this because we're kind of, you know, that's something that has been ingrained in childhood. And we, we've taken away this pattern modus operandum, let's say, and just function on that, you know, throughout our lives, you know, without, and, and we're not taught, we're not taught anywhere, you know, how to get in touch with ourselves, how to connect with ourselves, you know, how to actually check in with what our truth is really. Right? Yeah. 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 And, you know, part of this too is we're going to go through this today mm -hmm. is first of all, becoming aware of how our trauma, how our shock experiences, how all of that affects us. Now, we're going to talk also about 
you know, how you're helping people come back to that alignment, that natural place of alignment. Uh, for those of you out there, you're listening to the show, whether you're listening to it on a network or Facebook Live, for those of you folks on Facebook Live, just go ahead and type us a comment, type your question in, and what we'll do is we'll get those questions on air. If any of you would like to call into the show in the U.S., it's 1-800-930-2819. Uh, and this is about looking about the gifts that we get, right, Susanna? The, you know, when all is said and done and we go through these experiences and we come out the other end, then we're called to do something that we didn't even know we're capable of. Let's take a short break. When we come back, more with Susanna Jameson. And we're going to tell you how you can find out more about her, how you can work with her. And how about the gift? How about the personal healing frequency gifts that she has? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Winning at the game of money. Lynn Brown is now offering Full Spectrum Finance, a progressive 12-month program that will help you to navigate through the mechanics of financial expansion. Finally, a financial planner who looks at the full spectrum of money and abundance, engage you in the mental, physical, and energetic aspects of finance. This is Full Spectrum Finance. Are you ready to get into it? For more information, go to fullspectrumfinance.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Best-selling author, spiritual life, and business coach Joe Nunziata brings his higher energy and no-nonsense style to people who are ready to make powerful changes now. Wake up, step up, power up with a shot of Joe. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of high energy, no-nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. Visit JoeNuns.com. That's J-O-E-N-U-N-Z.com. Your happiness is your choice on Natural Peace Radio. Follow Sarah Van Ryswick as she addresses the power of emotions. Each month, Sarah covers different topics as she helps listeners activate their energetic spark and create powerful energy and amazing opportunities. Manifest your desires with Natural Peace Radio. For more information on Sarah and her work, visit naturalpeaceliving.com. Who's ready to rock 2018? Want expert assistance to ground and clear your energy and raise your vibration? Hi, I'm Wendy Rose Williams, Certified Spiritual Teacher. Call 425-502-0362 to schedule your free 15-minute consult to learn how a one-hour soul wisdom healing session, full-day regression healing, or 90-day energetic boot camp can help you with the next big thing. Visit wendyrosewilliams.com to plan your magic carpet ride with me. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. Hey, 
Hey, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have all of you uh, tuning us in and turning us on. I'm so thrilled to be introducing all of you to Love Light Sound Radio with Susanna Jamieson. And here's the deal. When you go through trauma in life, and, and believe me, we're going to talk about what that even looks like, because we're so used to in our society, Susanna, sucking it up and moving on. And that is something that many of us have grown up with, families that say, you know what, you just got to pick yourself up and move on. And we're going to talk about those childhood traumas in a moment. But before we do, I would love for people to know how they can find out more about you, how they can schedule an appointment with you. Uh, because once we're done with this show, you're going to be more aware of where you need help in your life. And Susanna can help. How can people learn about this and find out more about you and the many ways you work with people? Well, for once, like a, a, probably a good first step would be to go to my website, susannajameson.com. And if you're interested in finding out if I can help you with your particular situation, there is in the menu bar appointments and you can just, you know, find an a, space and on uh, my schedule that works for you and um you know there's a, a, a fall uh, short form attached to that and just fill it out quickly it's no big deal and um you can choose basically the the times that are available you know it my calendar tends to book up pretty fast so i would recommend that you either like you know, save the link or check back in maybe in a couple days um, if there's nothing available right now. So um, don't, you know, that doesn't mean yeah. anything. It just tends to book up fast. So yeah. just be aware of it. Just keep trying. That is basically what I'm, I want to say. And I do have for, for you to get like an, an introductory um, sense. There is a free gift download when you get to my website. And that already has some information about um, Love Light Sound healing, the frequency work, how they work. Um, there is also a vocal sample, you know, if you're interested in that, like just to explore for yourself. So that mm -hmm. is available there. Yeah. Oh, well, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. Um, you know, during the break, what I was saying to you was kind of interesting. I was saying, you know, we go through childhood, and sometimes we seem to have uh, experiences, but then we get older and we're taught to like suck it up and move on and don't pay attention to it. But then we find ourselves trying to live amazing lives and we just can't. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, here you are, you had this trauma in your life and you turn that into a gift. We are capable of that, aren't we? Yeah, we are. And I mean, you know, obviously that was life's intention for me. It's like I can't take credit for that, really. Let's say, you know, it's just how life showed up for me or through me. And, um, you know, it was pretty humbling, actually, you know, especially that that last major thing, as I said, like I thought I had it all figured out, you know, everything together. And then having, you know, coming back to a space where I'm uh, completely, you know, out of sync and, and actually at a place where I don't want to live anymore, which is, you know, pretty dire to um, be in and to, to be able to extric extricate myself out of that. Um, that was, you know, partially due to the foundation I already had. But at the same time, you know, life gifted me with this, these frequencies that came through um, within the healing process. And that's why I'm just passionate about sharing them because they just accelerate the healing process so much, you know, more yeah. in my experience and also what I've been seeing with my clients. So, and I love that you're bringing this up, Pat, with, uh, you know, with how trauma shows up in our lives. It, in my experience, it's so insidious, right? right? Because right. it's like, really, it's like sneaking up on us. I mean, there's so many of my clients, you look at them from the outside, you think like, you know, great life. I mean, you know, what's wrong? It's like, why do they lack self-confidence? Or, you know, why don't they, you know, step into their purpose? They have it all and, you know, things. And then, you know, looking closer, then there is this kind of, you know, yeah, if I really look close, yeah, I, I don't think I can do it. You know, I don't think I'm good enough. You know, I don't, you know, I always heard like my, my parents always used to tell me, you know, I'm, I'm no good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm never go going to amount at anything. But let's say even if it, it's even if it's that not that um, conscious, let's say, you know, just the fact that 
we are being what I would call domesticated or, you know, socialized as children, you know, taught or trained certain behaviors, create a disconnect. You know, it doesn't even have to be severe abuse. It doesn't have to be rape as a child. It doesn't have to be, you know, being beaten senseless or whatever. I mean, obviously, that's even more severe. But even, you know, small things like, as you mentioned, as a child being to told, you know, um, don't make such a fuss you know, get yeah. over it. You oh, know, yeah. I, don't, I don't have time for this right now. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, grocery yeah. store, you don't, the you know, tantrum is just not acceptable. You know, and what that does, it's, it creates this disconnect. Like I have a, this experience as a child, you know, and I'm coming from pure love essence. So this is my truth, my experience. And then the authority people around me and especially my caregivers, meaning my parents, you know, we, obviously I trust unconditionally in that moment, right? They are telling me, no, that's not how it is. You know, that's not how you're supposed to show up. That's not that's how it's right. Right. And out yeah. of that, we're taking like, if this is repeated, you know, we're taking away, well, guess something is wrong with me, you know, so something must be wrong with me, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. and, and obviously no one is a bad person. Even our per parents, they just didn't know better. I mean, they've probably been raised a similar way or had, had even worse experiences. You know, I mean, my parents are World War II children, you know, so that can clue you in to a certain extent, you know, in terms yeah. of trauma, what is running there. So, you know, I do have an, an understanding for that, you know, but even if you have that understanding, in my experience, until you really find self-love, true forgiveness is not possible. You know, there's all this thing out there, like I need to forgive, you know, and then the Bible says, and you know, whoever else tells you, you know, you gotta forgive. And then there's all these exercises that, that you're supposed to be doing to forgive yourself and others. Fact is, you know, for true forgiveness arises naturally in the healing process. You know, as I'm healing myself and I'm coming in touch, connecting, with self-love, you know, forgiveness is a natural byproduct. It's nothing I have to do about it, you know? Yeah, I love that we're talking about this, Susanna, because, you know, what you're really talking about is something I think a lot of us that have had childhood trauma have had to learn, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there could be a hundred people telling you, yeah, you know, forgive those people that beat you. Forgive this person that did this. Forgive that. Forgive this one. But I'll tell you, I mean, when you watch people that have moved into the healing zone, uh, exactly what you're talking about, they can talk about their past now as it was their past, not about how their past is literally controlling their present and their future. You know, they talk about it like you and I are talking about it, you know, to help people uh, understand that despite the trauma we went through, we learned a level of healing that starts right with, within us, inside of us. And yet when I hear you talk about it, it's like, of course, of course, if we're wounded on the inside, and that's where we're wounded, right? then it makes perfect sense that we got to heal that inside before we can take care of anything out there, right? Right, right, right. It's like, you know, as, as long as this this kind of deficiency, I would call it, is running, you know, because all of these beliefs are in a certain, you know, I'm deficient of, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, and so on. Right. So, you know, we have this tendency of, of asking that from the outside, right, in our relationships, you know, so we'll do anything to be loved, you know, to be accepted, to be acknowledged, to be appreciated, you know, be it even in our work environments, you know, it's like constantly, well, they didn't appreciate me, you know, they didn't appreciate what I did and things, you know. Now, energetically, what that does, like where we're coming from is like, when we're having this energy of like, look, am I good enough, you know, that this has this kind of doormat character, I would, you know, if, if you you know, if you know what I mean, it's, it's I like do coming know from. What you mean. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe you're talking about this. You know, let's see me. Look, let's get real about this, Susanna. Right? You and I have spent a lot of time talking here. They see us show up, right? And they see us at our best. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you'd have seen me an hour and a half, two hours ago, when I'm looking at trying to look at something that I want to adjust. There's that mode of me that experiences the little kid, 
that's scared. Remember that kid? I know you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? Okay, right? You know. Yeah. There's the little kid. Then there's the wounded adolescent, mm -hmm. right? Then, in my case, the homeless teenager, right? Not, yeah, so, so I'm only 17 now, and I'm not going to take up the whole hour. That's, that's just the first 17 years of my life. And all of that comes to the forefront between 9 and 10 o'clock this morning. And I've got to learn some tools. I've got to know how to heal, right? You and I are aware of this because we have been this. Yeah. We've been this, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. But you can accelerate the learning and the healing for people. And I think that's what today's show is about. Okay. It's not that we can't heal. What it is, is looking at the work that you're doing to help people get so directly at the core of it that they are not going to have to look back, right? Right, right. Yeah. And um, yeah, and, and basically my work is designed so that there is energetic support for your life force energy so that it can balance out naturally. And there's, you know, aspects that you don't have to do anything. That's the good news. However, and here's where the law of attraction comes um, back in and also with the positive affirmations, you know, what they left out in the in the secret is the part that you need to be taking um, intelligent action. <laughs> Right. It's like, you know, just sitting on the top of a mountain doing on for the rest of your life and doing like the positive thinking. That's not going to change your life. Right. And, you know, that's also what I'm touching on in my workshop. Um, you know, there are a lot of modalities obviously out there that are extremely helpful. Meditation and, you know, yoga practices, breathing exercises, mindfulness. It's all wonderful. You know, therapy to a certain extent, you know, um, and what it does, if you notice, is like, you know, meditation, for example, it's like as long as you're meditating, you can quiet your mind. You know, the more and more you practice, the more and more you train, like it feels like you're calmer, more serene. And but as soon as you're out of that practice and someone triggers you, I mean, you're up, you know, under the ceiling. It's like like this, you know, and and that is the thing. So. What it is for me about is like getting to the root to an extent and coming to a space of self-love that there is actually no trigger. And That's what I right. mean is, you know, no matter right. what anyone else does, says, right. thinks or feels about you, even if it's your loved ones. Right. You know, it's like, OK, that's their opinion. You know, they're allowed to be who they are. You know, it's got nothing to do with me coming to this you know, to, to the, the realization and true experience of this is not personal. It's not even about me. It's their suffering. It's got nothing to do with me. Yeah. You know, but childhood trauma was it, what it creates. It creates that false impression that whatever someone else does to us means something about us. Yeah. You know, and that is what is haunting us on a daily base, you know, and, in the yeah. present. Yeah. Right. And yeah, and we're going to talk about this when we come back. But the other right. thing, too, that I know you talk about, you touched upon it earlier in the show, is that we have a legacy. We have parents. They had parents. They had parents. They had parents. And if you go back in time and you look at the generations that have come before, they had a set of tools that is not even close to the set of tools we're talking about today. And people don't like it when we say, those folks did the best we could. they could. Yeah, but that's uh, the truth. But yeah. it is the truth. And the truth. Pat, someone said to me, how can you say that about a father that sexually abused his daughter? Mm -hmm. Well, chances are his father did that or right. the father's father. The yeah. question really is this for you and the work you do. What are we going to do to break the cycle? Right, exactly. What are we going to do to break the cycle? When we come back, Suzanne is going to take us on a journey of how to break that cycle, how we can step forward, not victims in the world, but victimless. How can we rise up and be those people out there that we hear, see, and we think we want to be like and don't think we can accomplish it? Well, Suzanne has got a different message. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
you wish you had more joy in your life? Check out the new book by Robert Max Schoenfeld, For the Love of Joy, a 30-day adventure for creating joy in your life because you deserve more joy, more love, more health, more abundance, and more life. Available now on Amazon. Get your copy today. Visit theartofpowerfulliving.com. That's theartofpowerfulliving.com. Are you searching? searching? Looking for a sign? A message you need to hear? From the great unknown? From the most mysterious place? That is the most familiar to your soul? In the depths of who you are? The universe puts someone here to talk to. Someone God gave a blessing to that you may find insight with the angel lady dot net 1-800-323-1790 defining success and putting minds to work with the higher learners career and leadership series rudy racine will help you craft your personal definition of success offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals take the leap with the right mix of focus and motivation anything can be achieved Tune in every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 Eastern. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. Be you plus live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in the first and third Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Check us out at drpatshow.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Oh, my goodness. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Pat. If you want to find out more about me, you can go to the Dr. Pat Show or Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, And pretty soon, we're going to be creating something really, really cool for all of you out there and going to ask for your help and involvement in our Positive Mojo movement. So you're going to hear a lot about that. Uh, But my guest today, uh, Susanna Jameson, has created an amazing platform. So when we're talking about how do we heal, You know, what is sound light? What is that? What does that mean? How does her work, her gifts and talents help you get right in their vibrationally frequency and move some things away? Um, Susanna, one more time, please tell folks how they can find out more about you. Yeah, well, general info about me and my work you can find on my website, SusannaJameson.com. And um, there is an appointment section, you know, if this already resonates with you and you want to find out if I can help you specifically in your situation, you know, just book an appointment there on my calendar. And um, if it's booked, just keep trying because it books up pretty fast. So that as an aside. And if you do want an, an, an idea of what that love, light and sound healing work is about, there is a free gift on my website. You can download a card deck that I specifically created for people to get an idea and there is also um, a couple of uh, vocal samples and um, there is an information sheet on 
what you need to do basically nothing but take them in you know but um you know it, it gives you an idea on how that works so all of that is available for you um to check out when you have a moment mm -hmm. thank you well i thank you thank you and you know i've gotten to work with you here over the past several weeks and mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I'm learning about myself, for sure, is how is it that this idea of sound and light, how is it affecting us in our, in our day? And I had a very interesting thing happen. I want to share with you and ask you about the trauma of the past, how it affects the present. So my meditation, believe it or not, is I hit a little white ball on a green table over a little net at about 80 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And that little ball, when you play that game, it has a sound. Mm -hmm. There's a sound. People know the sound of a ping pong ball, right? Mm -hmm. We've had jokes about it over history and over time. But the one thing we don't talk about is why is it the fastest growing sport for people over 50 years old, right? Mm -hmm. There is this sound of the ball that is very hypnotic and very meditative. And I caught myself doing something after talking to you the other day. I started to bounce this little ball on the table. Mm -hmm. And I was made aware of, by doing that, how much I love playing. And by simply bouncing the ball, my mood changed. And I wanted to talk to you about that. Now, clearly, that's not the body of work you do. <sighs> but there is an emotional connection to what brings us joy in life mm -hmm. and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And this, this segment is to talk about how you help people move past those things that are deep inside us. Mm -hmm. the beliefs, the patterns, mm -hmm. how do we get past that? So when we move into that place of joy, we know how to tap into it over and over again. Right, right. So, yeah, you know, so we've looked at the past briefly, like where, it, how trauma is created. And so now we're, you know, the thing is when it's not resolved, you know, subconsciously we're taking it into adulthood. And that is what I mean by the subconscious patterns or beliefs that are running you know so we're basically showing up on autopilot what i would call it it's you know we're having these moments when we're with in a work situation or whatever we'll blow up at people and we don't even know where it's coming from you know it's like it's like how often have we had this impression of my goodness why did i say that you know why did i act like this right now it's like this is not me right and and that shows the dis degree of disconnect that is present, you know, where we don't, where we're not in touch with ourselves and in any moment, you know, and it is about basically in my work coming back to the here now, it's always here now, you know, and fully be alive in that moment, not tune out and doing, you know, but coming into being like experiencing the moment right now. And, that can show up in all kinds of ways. You know, the thing is like not every moment is happy-go-lucky. There might be moments when you had this morning, like the issue between nine and 10 with whatever, you know, Facebook thing didn't work. And, you know, you can find yourself being irritated and there's nothing wrong with that. If you can allow yourself that expression too, that's where it becomes unconditional. You know, I don't have to be that person. Like, and, and that is what I'm seeing also in the spirituality trend it's like oh i'm so spiritual you know so then it's all here you know we're all in this spiritual world but there's no connection to the foundation you know so there's a discrepancy also and we might probably touch in the, on that in another show you know that's yeah. kind of kind of goes beyond this show right now yeah but it's a huge issue i'm seeing in the and also from my own experience you know that i had to learn to integrate um so that was a you know a side note off track so let's back on track is how do we do this? Like the way, in my experience, we can shift our present into healing and through that actually affect our future, right? Because what we're bringing now, you know, if, if we keep stuck in the same 
things that are blocking us, that are blocking our true expression, that are blocking us from really living our purpose and stepping in our power, into our power, you know, that's how it, it affects our future, right? We might have these wonderful ideas and concepts and dreams, but we don't even dare claiming them. We're not, you know, we don't even dare step into that because it's like, I'm not good enough, you know, who am I to do this, right? right. I mean, that's not going to happen. You know, I would love to, but... You know, I mean, my father always said, and, you know, obviously they know, right? But, I mean, even if they're dead, we still have that program running, you know, and it's it's basically for us or basically the way I help people is to come to the understanding that it always starts with you first, you know? So what I, I call it in my workshop, there's five shifts you need to make, you know? So number one is you need to align with your truth. You know, you first of all need to be in touch with what your truth actually is. There is only one like you. You're the one, you know, who can know what your truth is. No one can tell you that. And then, you know, number two is making you your top priority. And a lot of people have an issue with that. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know, that's selfish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But it's the most healthy selfish that is possible. Because really, I mean, if you're running on empty and then we're back into the overgiving, self-sacrificing, right? I mean, if you're running on empty, there's nothing really you have to give. How are you going to show up? Plus, it creates resentment, right? Because the overgiving is coming from, hey, I want something back subconsciously. Now, obviously, church says we're not supposed to, but, you know, that's, you know, that's not true. You know, if we really check in, we know we want something back. We want to be appreciated. We want to be acknowledged at least, you know, if not loved, but at least a bit of appreciation. So if that doesn't happen you know, in the long run, there, there is resentment. There's no way around it, you know. So the thing is, though, you know, Pat, and, and you know that also, you're very in tune with energy and how they work. It's like energy doesn't go anywhere, right? If there's an energy of resentment or hatred, where is it stored? It's in this system here, the one who's experiencing it, right? It's not the other person. They can have coffee at Starbucks and be all blessed out for all you know, right? But you have the hatred running about them and the resentment. And so it's affecting your system in that moment energetically, right? So if you try to gloss over it and just pretend it's not there, it's like, you know, I'm the spiritual person or, you know, I should be over it or, you know, I, I've forgiven them. I'm done. You know, I'm good. Right. So it's like, you know, I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm good. And, and just notice where that is not true. You know, where you're kind of basically lying to yourself just to be able to make it through the next day. But the resentment is still there and it's eating at you. And the thing is that, you know, the, the body energetically manifests the latest, right? It's the most dense energetically. So it takes right. a moment for things to manifest in the body. So when we're looking at chronic disease, and that's been coming up with my clients too, where they like, you know, have all these chronic issues and whatnot. And, you know, school medicine doesn't really make a connection to that, but it's basically the manifestation of trauma eventually if it's not resolved, you know, you have all these weird autoimmune diseases. No one can diagnose. You right. know, all of a sudden, you come up with all kinds of things where, like, you know, been to all the doctors. They have no idea where it's coming from. You know, and then you look at their timeline. It's like, uh, okay, what happened there? Okay, that trauma. Okay, what happened there? Yeah, well, that shock. Okay, yeah, duh. You know, but no one looks like this. You know, people don't take the whole person in and the whole context of their life and how they specifically react to uh, circumstances in their life into account, you know, and that's basically what I do for me. It's about holistic approach. It's like, who are you as a person, right. as that unique individual expression of life force energy that's out there. There is only one like you, you know, and I do need to meet that in my healing approach else it's not going to happen, you know, and then basically cater something to your needs, you know, where, where you are, um, met in in your approach to healing and also where you're at on your path so that that can actually happen for you you know and give you the tools and the support to make it happen for you but you have to be on board you know so that's yeah. the part of the um, intelligent action you have to be a thousand percent in you know yeah. I love what we're talking about because one of the things I did a show not too long ago, Susanna, mm -hmm. and here's this here here's the reference to what you just said about chronic disease. Mm -hmm. So in our country right now, 45 percent of our population, 133 million Americans, just so you know the number, everybody, <clears throat> have at least one 
chronic disease. That's 133 million people have at least one. Seven out of every 10 deaths in the United States are from this. And it's, it's mind boggling to me how we can have these numbers and yet we can't connect the dots to what you're saying about this inner emotional, energetic, vibrational healing. Because unless we do heal that, um, it's not as if the body is ignorant to what's going on. <laughs> the body reacts. The mm. body says, oh, you're really not doing too good. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's not do too good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's it. I love that you're pointing that out, um, Pat. That's exactly it. You know, the way um, in, in like school medicine or re regular medicine looks at disease is that it's like, here's a symptom, right? And we like, we have that isolated symptom. Like, let's say someone has migraines or something or stomach also. So it's like, oh, we need to get rid of that. What we're overlooking in that is like your life force energy is constantly working at balance constantly working at balance so you know someone with a stomach also also usually that's an expression of high level stress so are migraines you know or menstrual disorders or whatever chronic pains so you know basically here's your life force energy saying oh something's off you know i'm out of balance and have been for a while that's why i'm having this symptom you know i'm trying to make you aware that something is off then it's like oh no time you know i'm busy being a ceo or whatever you know so where's the pill cabinet right so pop, right. pop. And so, but the thing is like the, whatever you're having is not being cured. The symptom is just alleviated, right? So you have migraines, chronic, so you pop the pills, you know, and then they, after a day or two, they go away, but they're still coming back, right? The way I work is normal migraines, meaning like normal migraines, not ever, not, you know, not now. And then they come back and then you get right. something else, right? So it's about cure. It's yeah. not about suppressing yeah. symptoms. And yeah. I love that you pointed out the numbers too. And I want to yeah. add, add one on here, Pat, you know, okay. anything, especially trauma, you know, it's about basically trauma is so painful that we do have a tendency to not wanting to look at it, obviously, and also not wanting to look at the consequences. So why do you think, you know, we have overcompensation with food, with alcohol, with drugs, right? With medication, self-medication, you know, sex, TV, you know, you name it, right? And, you know, obviously there, it's it's all a matter of degree, you know, having a social drink here or there is, is one thing, but you know what I'm talking about, you know, when you need to have it every day, then it's not a kind of a pleasure thing. It's numbing yourself out and that's exactly what's happening. And just looking at, at the, you know, the amount of people who are overweight these days, you know, and yes, there is a diet issue in that, too. But a lot of that is also overcompensation because they just can't stand the pain, you know, and it's kind yeah. of suppressed with overeating, you yeah. know, or with drinking or with drugs, you know, just don't want to look at it. I have to tell you, the research on this, uh, when we we're looking at this, Susanna, in support of the body of work that you do, and it started in the 90s when I was in school and it started in the 90s in the body of empirical research now that is being shared with the public mm -hmm. on the relationship between emotions, immunity, disease, uh, psychological adjustment, whatever you want to call it, all of the above is now showing up in empirical studies. And what they're saying is, listen, if you've had a trauma, you are more likely to go down the path of some other chronic illness. Mm -hmm. So the question really is now, and I'd love to, to hear um, what you've learned about this. What, what can we do to help people relieve the possibility of trauma affecting somebody's future? Yeah. So, you know, I'm touching on that in, as, as I said, in my book, The Healing yeah. Call and Finding Your Innocence. I'm actually giving some um, exercises also like for every level that you can do by yourself. And, um, you know, the thing with this is one of the shifts I feel you need in order to really transform your life lastingly. It's like in my experience, there is no way you're doing it alone. 
you know, you need no. someone qualified, you need an expert mentor, you know, and whoever that is, the invitation is really find someone who resonates with you. Don't just go with whatever, you know, you do want to, I mean, it's profound work and you do want to find someone who can you, who you can really trust, you know, that's, that's paramount. And, um, you know, so that is one aspect. And, you know, there's so many help, self-help books out there, so much information. You know, if it's just about information, you can knock yourself out on Google. That's not what this is about. I mean, how many people have bought like, you know, exercises and things and then they hang out on the shelf and it's, it's not, you know, no one practices it. It's like, yes, it's good to have an understanding. You know, yes, it's okay to have that read that book about what happened in childhood and how it affected me, but it's all only on the intellectual level, right? There is like in that, it's it's great to get some understanding, but it, it doesn't integrate, you know, it doesn't help you integrate and shift your trauma, right? So basically, you know, what can be done is, you know, anything that gets you in touch with yourself, with your truth in any moment and anything that brings you into self-love, you know, that that's the, that's the baseline, you know, basically for you to come to self-love because out of that, you know, when there is, you can either come from love or you can come from fear. Both can, can't coexist at the same time. So when you're coming from love, there is no fear, you know, and that's also how you come from your own power, yeah. Yeah. right? Fearlessly and unapologetically standing yeah. in your truth. Right. Yeah. So this yeah. is where it starts. And that's where you need to come home to. And that's how I, I call my program, incidentally, coming home to yourself, yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, which is about coming home to this, which, which is your true essence, which is love essence. You know, mm -hmm. that's what it is about. Yeah. Well, you know, I know that we're going to do many more shows and talk more about, uh, especially in detail, about some of the things that you've talked about today and the way you help people. Because it is so important. You know, I don't think we wake up every day, Susanna, and we say to ourselves, oh, I wish today wasn't going to happen. I don't think we do that. You know, but there is an energy that unless we know how to move beyond it and get help, mm -hmm. we take it with us. We carry our energy with us. Mm -hmm. Hence, that's why you can't just do an affirmation and have it work. If you're carrying the energy of disbelief with you. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Especially if that is the one undercurrent, you know, oh, if, if right. it's a, a subconscious one, you know, right. it's running you the whole time and you're kind of trying to sugarcoat on top. That's not going to yeah. happen. No. Right. It's like if you, if you weed a garden and you just cut the top off it, you know, it's going to grow back. So you have to get to the root, right? That's basically what it is about. Yeah. yeah. And I love that you're bringing that up. That's totally, I mean, True in my experience, yes. Yeah, it is mine too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, now I have tools, but you said something important. I've not been able to do the work I've done in life alone. Mm -hmm. I've not been able to do that. And that's yes, why I'm so grateful for what you're doing in the world. Please tell folks again, how can they work with you? And then one last question. What is your personal message for today? Yeah, so how you can work with me today is, um, you know, best check out my website at susannajameson.com. You know, there's a possibility to download free gifts for you to familiarize yourself with my work or aspects of my work. And um, you can learn about my background and you can also book an appointment with me if you feel called so to do so, you know, to see if um, we could work together. If you want to check that out and my message for today um be kind with yourself mm. just be kind mm. with yourself you know be in touch with that mm. in my experience we're so often we're not you know just remembering yeah oh i love it susanna jameson everyone and i'm dr pat and as i said before uh you're going to be hearing a lot more from from susanna and i hope that you've heard something today which is going to enable you to believe in yourself and believe in your future. Thank you all. Thank you, Susanna. Thanks, thanks for so much. Show. Yeah, thanks. Um, Appreciate it. Uh, if you've missed any part of this, uh, please go to Transformation Talk Radio and both the audio and the video will be up there again. Stay tuned for another hour coming up on Transformation Talk Radio. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Love Light Sound Radio with Susanna Jameson on Transformation Talk Radio. 
Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you'll join us next month as Susanna explores how to align, balance, and consciously create your life. For more information on Susanna Jameson and her work, or to listen to past shows, visit her website at SusannaJameson.com. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.